Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. And we have a third party Transformers review for you. This time around we're going to be taking a look at the Zeta Toys ZV-02 Flash. Now this is their take on a masterpiece Bumblebee movie Blitzwing. And I gotta tell you guys, I have some opinions. But, let's go ahead and do as we always do and take a look at that packaging first. And this is all very big, so I don't know if I'll be able to get it all in the camera at one time, but we'll do what we can. So right up at the top you have the ZV-02 16 Plus. Down here it is the flash. Over here it is nothing. On the back there's nothing until you get down here and then you do have a few warnings. It's not for sale, but I was able to buy it. So yeah. Anyway, made in China 2021. It's all good to know. Nothing really to see on this side. Up top, nothing to see there. And down low, nothing to see there. So the packaging isn't all that flashy, no pun intended, but there it is. So let's go ahead and get that box out of the way and then we will take a look at everything that came inside that box. All right, everybody, so laid out here before you is everything that came inside that box, and I gotta tell you, this guy came with a lot of accessories. Very much appreciated. All the accessories are really cool. They all have a purpose. So let's go ahead and dig into it. We're just gonna start right over here. Uh, you notice we have the missile pods right there in the, in the middle, and those will take three missiles each. So he does come with a total of eight missiles. So it leaves you with a couple of spares. Now you can put these on his body. We'll talk about that when we show him fully accessorized. Uh, or you can just leave them be and put them off to the side. But they are pretty cool. I do like these. There's no paint on them, but good detailing. And there are two types of missiles. Now, now these two are the same, the same style. I do have the third type or the second type of missile on the missile pods over there, which we'll show when we bring those in for their close-up, but we do have those. And then let's go ahead and get the instructions out of the way. So you do get his sheet of instructions. So we'll move those on out of the way. Now let's go ahead and talk about those missile pods. So you get two of these missile pods and they are, the pods themselves are exactly the same. So you do have a spot or the three spots where you can put those missiles on just with those slots. For anybody who used to have GI Joes when they were younger, this is gonna feel really familiar. So you just plug them in and then you do have these slots underneath where you can plug that in. Uh, whether he's in plane mode, of course you can plug them in under the wing or in the bot mode we'll see in the when we show him all accessorized up. You can have these mounted on his legs as well. But you can see the two different types of missiles. So you have this, this type right here and then you have this type. And this is painted. So let me move this missile so you can see. So this is molded plastic but then it's painted to look weathered and uh, I, I think it looks great. This is, this is really cool to see. It's almost, uh, almost like a model. Uh, so if you were gonna paint a model of your, uh, of your Blitzwing or your Flash, that's what you would see. And then you just plug those missiles back in like that and then you're good to go. All right, so the next thing that we'll talk about is right over here on the right hand side, we're gonna talk about these fuel pods. So you do have two that are exactly the same. These are the under the wing fuel pods. So, I mean, they could, they could be bombs. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm almost entirely positive that for the jet mode, these technically are fuel pods to house additional jet fuel. So again, same thing. You can see that there's a weathered look to them. And there, there's really no weight. They're hollow inside, but they look great all right and then you have this under the fuselage fuel pod and again same thing maybe this is a bomb but i'm almost positive this is a, a fuel pod and you have the that weathering look on this as well so even that that detail with the rivets and everything going on looks really cool all right next accessory we're going to talk about is this little guy right here this is your official patented Bumblebee voice box ripper outer. So this is what Blitzwing used in the Bumblebee movie. Took that little point right there, ripped the voice box right out, and turned Bumblebee into the silent but deadly warrior that he became later. 
So there you go. Not a lot of paint here. You do have a little bit around this edge. Uh, but the molding, man, there's a lot going on. And you can see, of course, the, uh, the outline there of Blitzwing's hand. So very cool. All right, next up is we're going to talk about this thing in the back. This is the Blitzwing hand cannon. And when we get to the accessorized mode, you'll see just how cool this thing looks on him. It's just, this thing is great. So again, this weathered paint app look. You've got a little bit of that red right there. I mean, even up under here, you just got, it almost looks like touches of rust, which just looks fantastic. I mean, wh whoever painted this did a really good job. And then these, these three parts right here, this is just black molded plastic, but even then it looks really good. So great attention to detail on this. And then it does just plug in. I don't know if I can get light in there or not, but it has a little port on the end. And then that just plugs in when you take his hands off. It just plugs in right there where the hand would be. So very cool. Now, the last main accessory that we'll talk about is this display stand here. So this, when you get it in the box, it does come in three parts. And I think I'm going to do a quick camera adjustment here. Bear with me. There we go. So it does come in three parts. You have your base, you have this arm, and then you have this support pillar right here. Now, the cool thing about this base is everywhere you see one of these holes is where you can plug these two items in. So you don't have to have it oriented like this. You can actually have it, you know, mounted in the corner, sitting at an angle. If you want to do that, you can have it on the other side, whatever you want to do. It's really up to you. Um, the other nice thing about this base is everywhere you see these, these ports, anywhere you have a peg. So for his hands and for the missile pods, that kind of stuff, you can just plug them in and then you've got your storage. You also have storage right here on the back. And what I like to do when he's in the bot mode is I like to take that under the fuselage bomb and just, or uh, under the fuselage fuel pod and just plug it in right there. And I think that gives it a nice look as well. So you can adjust this a couple of different ways. Now you have the swing arm right there where you can pull that out and then you can adjust this little guy right here. So you can make a movement there and then you can adjust this separately. So if you want to bring that down for whatever reason, you could do something like this and plug it in. Um, as I said earlier, you can also just take this out and you can plug it in over here and bring that down and make some kind of adjustment there if you want. This also goes in and out just with a little bit of effort. So you can extend it, you can retract it. And then up here, you do have a locking ratchet joint to adjust this. So plug this in, make your adjustment, find the right position, and then just push that tab back out. And then you're locked in place and that's gonna hold just fine. So this support pillar really does do a lot for you. So be sure to use it whenever you're mounting because uh, that guy, he's heavy. He is a big dude and you do not want him falling. So yeah, once you put that support pillar on, that is significant as far as its ability to support. Additionally, you have storage underneath if you want to use it. So you do have the ability to store and it turns into a convenient carrying case. I don't mean to make this sound like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. But yeah, you can take both of these off and then you can take his accessories, store them in there, and then you can fold this up and then you have a convenient carrying case for all of your accessories or whatever you want to use. It even looks like it has a little handle. So you're like a little businessman. Do, 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 do. All right, so there you go. That is it for the accessories. So now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and get into the details and the articulation for this guy. And here he is, the bot we've all been waiting for. This is Mr. Flash. So let's go ahead and start talking about the details and oh my gosh, are there details. So let's go ahead and bring him on in and we'll look at that beautiful head sculpt first. And hopefully it'll focus on his head sculpt and not on his chest. So let's angle this down just a little bit. There we go. Bring that in nice and close so you can see all the goodies. So look at that beautiful head. I mean, that's just a gas masked up face only a mother could love. 
And he does, we'll talk about it more in the accessories, but he does have a light up feature. So he can look at you all evil. Hey, what are you looking at? And uh, yeah, very cool. Uh, even all the way around, good paint on this guy. And then we'll back him up a little bit and then we will just take a moment here and look at all that. Now he does get a little wobbly. He's not wobbly like a, like he's loose. He's just wobbly like he's a really heavy dude and thank goodness he has tight joints. So you can give him one of these and he'll just give you a little bit of a wobble for a little bit and then he slows down. But it's not a, not a lack of stability. It's simply because there's just so much mass to this guy. So uh, if he wobbles, don't take that in a bad way. I have my issues with this guy, but stability is not one of them. All right, so coming on down to the chest area, you can see that cockpit and all that great detail going on there. And then coming down here, now you do have, these are die cast. So you do have, and I think by design, they're just meant to be kind of loose like that. So they're meant to, I guess, pop out. But overall, the aesthetic on this guy looks great. Coming down here, great, great detail on those legs and on those landing gear feet, which these are, uh, it's kind of interesting. These are, these are kind of faux landing gear. So, but they look cool. All right, and coming around to the side, you have UFOAF. And then on the accessory side, a couple things that I didn't talk about that uh, I guess I should touch on now. Um, we didn't show them because I already had them installed, but he does come with three LED lights uh, that are packed separately in the box that require batteries, but I already have them installed uh, two one where one each goes in his engines for that afterburner light up effect like this and then the other led light assembly goes inside of his head for those light up eyes but i already have these pre-installed and i just have a little bit of scotch tape in there just to keep them from falling out so that th that may be one of my gripes uh it's not enough to really bother me but for me i put a little bit of tape in there just to keep them from falling out whenever i had them like this and then gravity would just let them fall so just a, something at a quick note there and then coming up this leg all kinds of stuff going on and let's get this arm out of the way take a look up under there so you do have all this mechanical detail right there and you can kind of see a little bit how he comes together but no real hollow areas on this guy at all and then coming up under that arm look at all that going on in there just really really cool and there we go look under the arm that way and we'll, while we're here let's just take a look at all that going on and then here is the outside of the arm and so you've got these nice sharp claws great detail here going on again this weathered effect just looks phenomenal Move this up out of the way and you can kind of see what's going on with that assembly there and then you've got all this detail and then you have these little winglets right there looking great and let's come around to the back the back as well is a feast for the eyes so even the back of his head and then you have all this going on right here you have these little fins you've got these smaller turbine intakes right there and then the backs of those wings just look amazing and then you've got his little little butt wings there whatever you want to call them and then even back here in the backs of the legs just everywhere this guy looks really really cool so yeah as far as shelf presence it guys it really doesn't get much better than this uh it, he he has an amazing shelf presence just just looks so darn good um all right so let's go ahead and talk about that articulation i will tell you now number one this guy is heavy um uh, and trying to keep him on camera while i do this apologies if i lose my frame a little bit and number two some of these joints are tight i appreciate tight joints but uh in order to do this properly i am going to take the wings off uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why so the wings uh, if this is a gripe or, or if there if I do have a gripe, it's probably this uh, The wings are just held in by some ports 
right back here. So you can move these wings forward and back. You can move them in and out a little bit if you want, just to kind of change the overall look. But these aren't the tightest ports in the world, so these wings actually come out kind of easily. So I'm gonna take them out now. I would have liked to have been them be a little tighter. This one is looser than the other wing, so it takes very little effort at all for that wing to come out. But uh, my articulation, it works a lot better when I don't have to worry about dropping these wings. Not that this guy's fragile, he just feels fragile. He feels like a model. I don't wanna test how fragile he is, if that makes sense, all right? And without those wings, he just looks like a little skinny dude now. You know, you're not so scary now, are you? No, you're just a little guy. All right, so as far as that head goes, you can do pretty much anything you want with that head. You can get a little bit of up and down tilt uh, on this assembly right here if you really need kind of an extreme look. Otherwise, you've got that ball joint where you can go up, down, you can go side, side, and you can wiggle it and waggle it, whatever you want to do. All right, and then over here on the shoulders, you can, I count this arti as articulation because it does change the way he looks. You can flare these out, you can bring them back, you can bring them forward, you can flop them down if you want to, whatever you want to do. But on these shoulders, you can bring these out. Now get these out of your way too, it, it is helpful. You can get his hand way up in there. All right, and you can go all the way around if you choose to do so. And you do have bicep rotation right up there just above the shoulder or just below the shoulder. And then you do have double jointed elbows so you can get one heck of a great elbow bend on this guy. Oh, I didn't mean to knock his butt flap off. Little butt flaps, they're just on with little ball joints. So they just snap right back in. All right, and then down here, as an added bonus, not only do you have bicep rotation, but you also have forearm rotation. So very cool. And then down here at the wrists, you don't get any wrist bend because they are just on ports. So the, the hands come off like that and you can see that there's no, no assembly there that would like a ball joint that would allow them to do any kind of wrist bend, but you do get wrist rotation. And then, heck, got the hand off, be easier. Um, for the hands themselves, you have a ball joint in that thumb and that's the only thing that you're gonna get there other than this little pin. So you've got a ball joint and you've got a pin there, nothing up here. And then for the fingers, real similar, you have your, uh, your joint right here where you can bend them and then you can bend them individually at that second knuckle. So if, I don't know if you wanted him doing something like that, you could totally make that happen. All right, so that is it for the hands. Now he does have waist rotation, so let's get these arms out of the way. And you have that waist rotation right there, so you can move that around wherever you want. And plug that back in. All right, and then he does have this uh, ang angle adjustable cod piece. So whatever you want to do there. Now as far as the hips go, these are pretty tight too, which I do appreciate. And I need to move his arm out of the way to show you this absolutely astounding, amazing, spectacular Van Dam. Look at that for a big dude. Look at that. Awesome. 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 Love it. All right. Let's bring those legs back down and he can kick forward about that far. So he starts running into himself up here. Would have been nice if we could have, given, could have gotten a little bit better front kick and you move his butt plates out of the way and you can get a back kick about that far before he starts running into himself right there. So good range of motion in those legs. Now I'm going to angle my camera down because it'll just be easier for me because this guy's kind of heavy. All right. Now he does have thigh rotation, but just be careful how far you go with it before you start running into things and uh, causing some kind of damage. So just be ginger with him. And as far as the knee bend goes, let's move that leg forward. He has double jointed knees, so you can get great knee bend out of this guy as well. So no issues as far as getting some posing out of this guy for sure. And then down here at the feet, you get ankle tilt out, ankle tilt in, and then a little bit of forward and a little bit of back on those feet. And most of this is just due to the fact that he's running into himself. So, 
you know, if you could avoid some of that geometry, it'll do you better. But yeah, this guy, highly, highly articulated, incredibly detailed. So no, no major complaints whatsoever other than just those wings. I would have liked to have had those wings peg in a little more tightly back here into his ports right there. All right, so that's it for the details and articulations. Let's get this guy accessorized up so you can see him in all of his glory, ready to go into battle. So here we see Mr. Flash all fully accessorized. And yeah, guys, I mean, I gotta say, he looks good. He looks really good. So I'm going to use my handy dandy drumstick here because this guy is so big, I had to push him so far deep in my light box that I don't feel like reaching over the camera to point out some of the details, so we're just gonna use this guy. So as you can see right here in the back, you do have a spot on each leg where you can put those missile pods and you can load him up with three missiles each on those legs. Um, to the best of my knowledge, uh, he does have two missiles left over. Not entirely sure where to put those if they go somewhere on his person in, in bot mode. I've tried a few different uh, tabs, but they don't seem to fit. So if anybody out there has any ideas, let me know. Uh, we also see his ginormous hand cannon right here. So looks great. You just take the hand off, put the hand cannon on, and it looks completely natural. Looks like it's a, 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 a part of him, if you will. And then, of course, up here you have the official Bumblebee Throat Ripper Outer device thing that goes on that hand. Just just like the hand cannon, you unplug the, the regular hand, plug that in, and you're good to go. So yeah, this guy can get nuts with accessories and looks so good pulling it off. And to be fair, you don't have to have the missile pods down here. You can take those the the tri pod missile pod off if you want, and you can just have a singular missile on that tab if you want a little bit of a cleaner look. So um, what what I'll do now is I will show off the other feature, the the light up eyes feature. Um, and we'll take a look at that, but I'll turn the lights off in my light box so we can get a better view of that. All right, so I turned the lights off in my light box, and I've just got the ambient light behind me now, just enough so my, hopefully my camera's staying focused for this segment. But here we see Flash with his eyes off, I guess if you want to call it that, without looking evil. But let's go ahead and turn those on. There's just a little button on the back of the head. Give that a little push, and oh yeah, tell me that doesn't look awesome. That's just a sweet, evil look. Uh, it, it just, I love it. So this is a great feature. I know it's, it's really just a gimmick. Totally understand, but it just works. I mean, it, it brings this this character to life, and it just makes him look really scary and intimidating, and you know, ready to rip the throats out of some Autobots. All right, so that's it for the accessories. So let's go ahead and move on to the next segment. So let's go ahead and take a nice detailed look at the Zeta Toys Flash in his alt mode. And right now I have him all armored up, uh, but we're just going to go nice and slow here and kind of soak in all those details. And the one thing that I will say about this figure is it, it looks great in the alt mode, looks great in the bot mode. But because of the sheer weight and the sheer size of this thing, um, th this figure, he's not fragile, but he feels fragile. And, and it's really easy to knock panels loose and, and, and get things kind of cattywampus here. So I'm going to kind of handle this with, with kid gloves as we make our way around. And I'm going to take full advantage of just not hitting my camera. Damn it. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and take a few moments to kind of soak in all of the details of Zeta Toys Flash here in his alt mode. And, uh, you know, I, I have to say that, that that this guy looks great. I mean, this alt mode looks wonderful. The, of course, the bot mode looks wonderful. But the one thing that I will say, particularly in the alt mode, is because he's so big and because he's so heavy, he's not fragile, but he feels fragile. So it's uh, it's not fragile from a standpoint of wanting uh, you feel like you're going to break him, but it is definitely 
fragile from a standpoint of you feel like you, you pick him up in the wrong place and you're going to, you know, knock stuff, you know, kind of cattywampus. So things are out of place. So I'm going to handle this guy with kid gloves and I'm going to take full advantage here of just using my surface and try to keep him on the surface as much as I can for this portion of it just because of his sheer size and his sheer weight. But we're, we're definitely going to take a look at that underside as well so you can see all the detail there. But as we have him right now, I have him fully armed up. So I do have the hand cannon on his nose cone. And we'll take that off here in a second. And moving, of course, down to the side here, you do have that cockpit. And you do have the, the ability to open that cockpit and take a look inside if I can get that guy open. I promise you really do. There we go. So you do have the ability to take a look inside that cockpit and it's not a great amount of detail, but hey, it's it's pretty good. And, you know, you do have it's not going to be the easiest thing to see in uh, with me holding him this way, but you do actually have two seats in there. So that's really cool. And then we'll just tuck that back away and then coming down here to the side, just looking at him right there from the side, you you all these panel lines, all these rivets, just kind of this weathering effect that all looks good. You even have danger upside down. So, you know, if you're doing a cartwheel, you can read it. And back here, you, uh, of course, it's not the U.S. Air Force. I think that's probably getting too close to um, legal territory where Zeta Toys could get uh, a little bit of a lawsuit going. So it is the UFOAF, so the Unidentified Flying Object Air Force, I suppose. And coming around here to the back now, hopefully this comes through on camera. I want to make sure right there we do have the afterburners lit up. So you can see that right there. And you have all this detail back here on these tail fins. And moving him around, taking a look at him from the back right there. I think he looks pretty good. And of course, coming around to this side, it's going to look really similar to the other side because, hey, symmetry, right? But yeah, this guy just looks so stinking cool. Now I am going to go ahead and I'm going to lift him up here. And I'm going to show you as best I can from the top what you've got going on. And I do have a little bit of a gap right here. I just can't seem to get that gap out, which is unfortunate. And then I'm going to flip him over so we can see everything going on with the bottom right there. So just all kinds of spots for missiles, for bombs. You've got the landing gear right there. So I do want to show right here. You do have those landing gears sticking out. You've got that one up there and this one down here. And then of course you do have that front landing gear and you do have a spring in that. So it's spring loaded. So that's really cool. So yeah, this guy just looks the part. Absolutely looks the part. And of course you can take this uh, hand cannon off the front so you just have to give this a little bit of a wiggle up here. And there it is without the hand cannon on the front. So you can see all that in all of its glory. All right. So that's really it for the alt mode details um, as far as kind of that close up. So let's go ahead and move on and keep the review moving. All right, everybody, so here is the Zeta Toys Flash in his alt mode and all decked out, fully armored up and ready to go into battle and uh, do a whole lot of damage. And I thought that for the showing the display base and showing him on the display base that the best thing to do uh, would be to go ahead and put him on my turntable so we can get a nice 360 degree view of this guy. Uh, he is significant in his size, and he's also a really heavy figure. So if there's a little bit of a wobble here, it's simply due to the fact that I have him so high up on his his uh, display base or on his flight stand, and my turntable may have a little bit of a wobble in it just simply because of the weight of this guy. So if you see a little bit of a wobble, that's what it is. But yeah, we can see it here in all of its glory, what he would look like sitting on your shelf on your display base and and of course you can adjust this uh, this flight stand i keep calling it a display base you can adjust this this flight stand uh bring it higher bring it lower you know stick him straight up bring him down so it looks like he's a uh, you know doing kind of a dive bomb attack uh whatever you want to do with this it's it's pretty versatile and you can see all that weaponry that comes with him so there's his hand cannon 
and every armament that he comes with him, all of those missiles, all of those bombs, there's a there's a place for all of them on this flight stand or on, on uh, under his wing, and then on his flight stand he actually has spots for his additional accessories that you're not using in the moment. So one of his hands and the voice ripper outer that he used on Bumblebee. So yeah, this is this is really cool. Also really great in this mode is if you have his afterburners uh, turned on, which I don't even have it turned on in this mode, but we will take a look at those. We will see those lit up. But yeah, it looks absolutely great here. And I wanted to just take a moment and show this off because it's definitely worth seeing. And if you're going to display him in his alt mode, I just can't imagine why you wouldn't put him on this flight stand. So with, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and keep moving on with the review and on to the next. Let's go ahead and jump into those alt mode comparisons. And what we'll do is uh, we will go ahead and start with, I don't want to say it's the most relevant comparison, but uh, it is the comparison that Flash is very loosely based on. So, of course, on the left we have the Zeta Toys Flash, and on the right this is the Studio Series Blitzwing. So they they look like two completely different styles of of jet and if i had to guess i would say that that's probably due to legal issues i think over here for the studio series hasbro takara did not get any type of licensing from any of the the manufacturers whether that be northrop grumman or anything like that so i think they went with kind of their own design of a quasi sort of hairier maybe kind of jet over here uh, for that for that studio series figure whereas the third party company Zeta they're taking the risk I mean this this right here looks way more movie accurate than what the studio series is but I, I really do think that that's due to the licensing issues as I've said but uh, complete apples and oranges here but I just wanted to bring that in because this is the basis this is the this is the point of reference for the zeta toys flash and for our next comparison we have the mpm 10 masterpiece movie starscream and this one of course is a licensed uh, vehicle mode this is the lockheed martin f-22 raptor so you can see how those two look together and for our next alt mode comparison here we see the mp11 mold for thundercracker and this is the F-15 Eagle. For our final alt mode comparison, here we have the Zeta Toys Flash on the left, and on the right we have the MP-52 Starscream. So this is the Starscream Masterpiece version 2.0 or version 3.0. I'll let you have that argument, but there we are. And that wraps up the alt mode comparison, so let's go ahead and get this guy back into his bot mode so we can do some bot mode comparisons. All right, so for our first bot mode comparison, here we see the Zeta Toys Flash on the left next to the Studio Series mainline Blitzwing, and I know it's no comparison. These guys come from two totally different worlds. You have a, you know, masterpiece scaled figure on the left and then a mainline figure on the right, but this guy's the inspiration, so I wanted to bring him in uh, as our first comparison so you can see just what the differences are between these two guys. So there you go. For our next comparison, here we see the MP11 Masterpiece Mold. In this case, this is MP11 Thundercracker. And for the next comparison, here we see Zeta Toys Flash next to the MP52 Starscream. And wow, you know, seeing these two, two guys side by side, what a difference in the size. This guy is absolutely huge. Next up, we see the Zeta Toys Flash next to the Masterpiece Movie Starscream. For a Bumblebee movie masterpiece comparison, here we see Flash, a.k.a. Blitzwing, next to the Masterpiece Movie Series Bumblebee and the Masterpiece Movie Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie. So again, just what what a what an incredible thing to see here between the three of them. Uh, but I'm just in awe over the size of the Zeta Toys Flash. Just for fun, I figured we would uh, go ahead and compare Flash to a couple of Megatrons from the Bayverse movies. So here in the middle, we have the Unique Toys Dragoon. This is Unique Toys' take on the last night Megatron. 
And on the far right, we have the the Megatron from the first 2007 Babers movie. This is the Masterpiece movie version of Megatron. And for our final comparison, here we see the Zeta Toys Flash, a.k.a. Bumblebee Blitzwing, with the OG, the original G1 Triple Changer Blitzwing from the mid-1980s. All right, Blitzwing says that wraps up the bot mode comparisons, so let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts before he hurts somebody. All right, everybody, so let's go ahead and talk about those final thoughts on the Zeta Toys ZV-02 Flash. To put it simply, this is an amazing third-party masterpiece figure. Um, he, he has his downsides, uh, the main downside being the incredibly complex transformation. There's a, so much panel forming and uh, so many areas where it feels like you're going to break him. He's he's kind of he's kind of fiddly and it makes me nervous with the transformation. Not to mention that the transformation really isn't all that fun. I don't find a lot of enjoyment in the conversion. Um, so that's probably the single biggest downside, but he looks good in both of his modes. It's just getting him there. It makes me nervous. I feel like I'm going to break something and I don't find a lot of joy in it. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and jump into those bullets and try to quantify this guy. So right off the bat for number one, for the aesthetics, the overall look, bar none, this guy looks amazing. He looks phenomenal in his robot mode. He looks amazing in his jet mode. Uh, I could want for very little as far as uh, anything extra that I could see. The, the, the paint looks great. The weathering effects look great. Uh, just the overall shelf presence of this guy is, it's it's on, on level with a non-converting statue figure of Blitzwing. I think it looks great. So for the aesthetics, I'm putting out a rare 10 out of 10 on this guy. I don't give those out lightly, but but this guy from every angle looks awesome. So job well done. Articulation. For a figure this size, for a figure that transforms, incredible articulation. Uh, he, he will do just about everything that you want him to do. You can get him in almost any position that you want. Uh, I don't have him in a more, more dynamic position right now simply because I have him on my turntable and because of his size, I can't do much because, I mean, you can see even with the leg spread that he has right now, he's on the edges of my turntable. So uh, I don't want to do a lot there, but you can you can literally get this guy. His joints are tight enough and he has enough articulation. You can get this guy in a in a kicking pose where he's got one foot on the ground and, or, and one leg in the air and he'll hold it. So incredible articulation. If, if there was anything that I would want from a wishlist standpoint on articulation on this guy, it would be, I would like to have more front and back leg kick. He just kind of runs into himself, but everything else, you really couldn't ask for more on the articulation. So job well done on that articulation as well. I'm giving him a nine out of 10 on that. Uh, next up is the accessories. This guy comes with a metric ton of accessories, and I know that's hyperbolic, but gosh, when I opened the box and I started taking things out, I mean, he has more accessories than I know what to do with in any given mode. So uh, just that fact alone, the, the accessories that he comes with look great. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more paint maybe on the hand cannon and on the official patented Bumblebee voice box ripper outer, but everything looks great on this guy and he comes with so much of it there's so much playability there that stand has versatility for different poses in in both the bot mode and the jet mode uh so job well done on the accessories i'm giving out another rare 10 out of 10 on accessories for this uh getting to quality overall the quality is great now i have i have a little bit of a story i'm going to condense it down this is not uh, the supplier's fault. I purchased this from TF Source. Uh, when I first purchased this figure, uh, he was missing things. He was missing the missile pods. He was missing the LED light uh, assemblies. Uh, so I had to work with TF Source. They hooked me up. They got the stuff for me. So I'm not going to count that as, as overall quality of the figure, but I am going to count that as kind of a ding against uh, Zeta Toys for not having that stuff included in the box. So between Missing a few of those items, which TF Source hooked me up right away. They got me a replacement figure. Everything was there, so it was great. And I have the just a bit of a gripe with the wings where they peg in. I would have liked to have seen them a little bit tighter. Uh, everything else on this guy, the joints are tight. Paint looks great. Uh, just overall, 
other than feeling fragile, he's not fragile. He just feels fragile just because of his size. I'm giving this guy a 9 out of a 10 on quality. And getting to our final point here, overall value. Uh, this is not a cheap figure. Uh, I purchased this from tfsource.com. Uh, I believe it was uh, 200 US dollars. Uh, I'll have to double check that, and if that's wrong, I'll, I'll update that in the description. But I do believe it was 200 US dollars, so he's not an inexpensive figure. However, with everything you get, with this overall look, with the articulation, um, I think he's still a good value. I've seen more expensive figures that come with less and are far more disappointing than what Zeta Toys Flash is. So I'm going to give this guy a 9 out of 10 for overall value. So this brings us to a grand total out of a possible 50 points. Uh, Zeta Toys is my reigning champion right now with 47 points out of a possible 50, which puts him at a 94%. So I can easily, without hesitation, recommend this figure. If you have the means to pick him up, if you are a masterpiece collector, if you like the, the, the third-party masterpieces or the Bayverse-style masterpieces, this guy has to be on your shelf. My biggest complaint is I'm not a fan of the transformation. It, it, it's, it's not my favorite point, but man, he looks good in bot mode. He looks good in jet mode, and it's totally worth it. I have no regrets picking this guy up. So with that, it's going to wrap up the review. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of insight on this figure. Uh, hopefully you're able to make a purchasing decision based on the information you've provided here. And if not, at the very least, I hope you enjoyed the watching the video and you were entertained. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel as we're going to keep bringing content out to you. We have no... Uh, no thoughts of slowing down whatsoever. And leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this guy. I know the Mechanical Alliance Blitzwing is out there as well. I haven't gotten my hands on that figure yet, and I probably won't. But I'd be interested in, interested in hearing from anybody who has that figure, say, versus the Zeta Toys Flash. So with that, guys, we're going to wrap it up. Until we see you guys in the next review, take care.